third, and we are starting our event about retail transformation, payment industry trends, presented by our guest, special guest, guest of honor, João Pedro Paro Neto. He's the president of MasterCard GeoSouth. Um, I'd like to extend um, our thanks to Edson Tamamaro and our banking and financing committee here represented by our uh, colleague board member, Luis Davia Zambuja, also vice president of uh, BACCF for 2021 and um, chairperson of the banking and financing uh, committee. Thanks, uh, David, thanks, Edson, and thank you very much, uh, Mr. João Pedro Paro Neto. Um, also, I'd like to extend our thank thanks to, obviously, the uh, Brazilian Consulate General, uh, represented always by Ambassador João Mendes Pereira, our uh, honor honorary president, uh, also Ache USA newspaper and Haya Trace. Um, I'd like to extend our welcome to all new members. Um, for those of you, of you participating for the first time, if you're not a member yet, we encourage you to join the BACCF. We are the largest binational chamber of commerce of the Americas in South Florida. So please feel free to speak with Mary or Larissa to schedule a meeting uh, to talk about your membership. Throughout the presentation, you're welcome to send your questions via chat. And following the presentation, our moderator, Luis Davia Zambuja, will do his best to include your questions. Uh, we're gonna have a question and answer se segment after um, Mr. Uh, Paroneto's uh, presentation. So at this time, it is with our great pleasure to welcome João Pedro Paroneto. Uh, Bem-vindo. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you, Edson. Thank you, Luiz. Thank you, Mary and Larissa. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for everyone to assist us, to be here with us. I think the idea here is to talk about something that I'm a fanatic for. So when talk about the payment industry, I love it. So it's easy and a pleasure to talk about it because we can see how we can value this, how we can help the world to transform ourselves in a better world, a better place to be. So we like to say that doing well by doing good is something that's really behind our way of doing business. And we love this. So a pleasure to talk to you guys. So the idea here is to talk a little bit at the beginning, then it's open for questions. It will be more than a pleasure to be answer questions that comes from you guys overall. So just talk a little bit about MasterCard, and I promise that I will talk about the market and everything else related to our market. So I think first thing that is MasterCard is a, we are in the market for over 50 years. Uh, and since the beginning, we started as a card business, a simple card business company. And with that, we are able to, to be in 210 countries doing transactions or every single thing related to the card business. Uh, 210 countries, that mean the world. There's no place that we are not in there. There's, we cannot find a place that doesn't take our card uh, to accept our card. So there's a, there's a very glad and a, a, a nice work done by our team since the beginning of our, our industry. And we, we work with 150 different currencies around, uh, around the world. And many people ask us all the time, oh, you think about the crypto, you think about this and that, we care less. We, can, we work with different kinds of currencies. The only thing we look into it is always has to be some currencies regulated by the government where, where we are, because we cannot just go there and say, I can take currencies that are not regulated. So it has to be regulated. And always we look into those different currencies that are coming so we are looking to that to have to be stable currency, has to be taking care of customers and things like that. So currency is something that is no a problem for us because we work with this and know how to do that. If you think about number of transactions that goes over our networks, we are talking about almost 60 billion transactions a year. That's, I mean, three, four transactions by citizens using our, our network. That's a, that's a great number. So a, we are very happy to say that. And the most fantastic thing is all this thing that we do to make a transaction happen. If you guys are in Japan and you live in the United States and do a transactions in Europe, in Japan, sorry, and the things will happen faster than a blink of an eye. So that's the way we are when we develop our technology, think about that. And always when we as a MasterCard, we understand the business ourselves is a business that we look into before the transaction, during the transactions and after the transactions. Look into those three spaces we talk about anything you guys can talk because we know how to do that. 
Our strategy goes over multi-rail today. We, le- we, we used to be a card company. Today we are a technology company and uh, payment industry. Because of that, we are able to take many different ways of payment. And our goal is to give to our customer and consumer all the possibilities to make payment. And you decide what payment you're gonna use, whatever you want. I like to use an example, you guys can understand that. Imagine you are a two boot, you are a motorcycle guy with all those uh, uh, clothes that you have to use to be driving a motorcycle. And you have to go there and pay for your for your tool. Uh, the better way to do that is not to open up your wallet, pick up your card or your phone or your money or whatever, is if you have something like a, a watch in your hand, you just go, uh, you put a close to the the, 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 the totem and go, that's it. So this is the best way to do because it's easier and faster for you. So we think like that always, where I can use the payment in the best way. So this is MasterCard today. Thinking about the positive, easy way to give our customer the way to make a payment. In the end, we are gonna be making payments invisible. What's that mean? You don't know that you're paying. Think about the Uber payment. You don't know that you're paying, although you know, but you can go farther than that. And then you have many other ways to make payments. And the idea is that you, in the end, I don't need to ask you for credentials for anything because the payment will happen because thing happens behind the scene and you know how to make it happen. So basically as a tech company and the payment industry, you think like that. And also you can add value before the transaction and after the transactions, helping our partners, our merchants and so on and so forth. Why that? Because imagine I have all kinds of information if I part with some, organization that also has more information, together we can combine our information, make it a better, and I can help onboard my customers into their business. So this is one way to do that. Other way to do that, we can find different ways and data to make that happen and to be efficient doing that. Because I know when I have transactions, I know what's going on with you as a consumer using your card in different places. And I can hopefully say, your share here is better or worse, you're winning or losing, your promotion is good or bad, things like that. So this is a piece of before transaction happens. Doing the transactions that can help you with all the security lens of that. So I can give you all the credentials to say that you are you and you are paying to somebody that you really know that it's Edson. For example, on the other hand, I know that's Edson, you're giving the money to Edson. So we help that as well. So we protect proud, we protect all the different problems that could happen during the transactions. And after the transactions, you have all the examples, simple example, you board program. I give you more incentive to go back to the cycle. So at the end, this is a payment technology company, multi-rail company that we are today. And we are very happy and glad to talk about this. So moving forward a little bit. So the thing, So like I said, I talked a little bit about MasterCard. Let's go over the market now so we guys can have a little glance about it. So when I look into the Brazilian market, just to give you a perspective, the Brazil in terms of payment is the second most important market in the world, the second biggest market in the world. So United States, number one, we are the number two. If you consider China, China will be bigger than the United States than the United States and than Brazil. Why we don't take China as part of this? Because China is a closed loop environment. What's that mean? they decide to do things among themselves. So they are gonna become bigger because they, they, can have, they don't have competition, things like that. So we consider that they are not part of this open environment. So when you talk about open environment, United States and Brazil. If you talk overall China, United States and Brazil. We talk about number of transactions and so on and so forth. So in 2019, we have like a volume of credit. It's always, we have just two thirds, we call that. Credit and debit, 63%, 65 is used to be around those numbers. That's the Brazilian market in terms of volume. And when you talk about transactions, about half and half. This was before the pandemic. There was the scenario before the pandemic. This is credit always growing faster than debits. 
and always this is good for our business, but we have prepaid that's coming up. It's a new thing that was launched in Brazil recently. We have commercial business, we have other kinds of business. When you look at about transactions, you talk about roughly speaking 22.5 billion transactions. If you think about the Brazil, 220 million people, you're almost saying that 100 transactions per year per Brazilian. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Almost each three days, somebody does a transaction with cards. That's a mean that almost half of the payments in Brazilian market is done using cards, different kinds of cards. With the pandemic, you guys can see what happened. The credit went down a little bit because it was a lot of disbursement, government disbursement to incentivize people to use and they use the debit card or the prepaid card. So this volume increased among the entire industry. The volume is still growing. Despite the, crisis, the crisis we had last year, we went from 1.8 trillion to 2 trillions. And, and this is good for to see where we are today, 23.3 billion transactions. We also grew in that. So the market of Brazil is very strong, very fast. In terms of share of MasterCard, we have to speak in terms of volume. Official numbers, we don't have volume. I'm going to tell you guys. But in terms of uh, numbers of cards, this is the official number. We are the leader in the market with, roughly speaking, 43%. Data 2019, this number comes out from the central bank. So in 2020, probably you're going to be bigger than that. So, uh, but in terms of volume, that's the way we measure. We are over 50% of market share. That's the way the industry is measured. So we are in a very great position. Here. So when you think about how we measure the import of our business, we look into the penetration over the PC, the consumption of the family. So the private consumption expenditure. So what does that mean? We had like a, an average 43 in 2019, 46 last year, and this is gonna be the average for 50. We have a target to, be, to reach 60% by the end of 2023. We are very, we are going in a nice way to reach that. That's what I mean. Each 6% of the consumer of the families in Brazil is gonna be used to cards. So that's very good for electronic payments. So makes things more, uh, let's say, in terms of collection, different kinds of things you can think about being electronic payments much better than not being electronic payment because you save money for the society. The cost of cash, the cost of the money to protect it with insurance, to issue it, to print, to, think, to transport, things like that. Roughly speaking, it costs 1% of the GDP in each country. It varies from a little bit before uh, 0.9 to 1.2, 0.3, depends on the country. So it's a lot of money you can save doing electronic payments. That's why we are working, everybody's working the same directions. If you can have a glance here, we have a tool that's very important that we use around the world. We have like a 30 countries in the world that we, we track this. We track the retail business environment. So we know how the retail is moving on. So we can know this much before the official data comes out because we have, we have, we know the transactions. We are in the middle of the transaction, we know what's going on with retail. So you can see here, the green line in the United States. I just put the United States in Brazil, you guys can see the comparisons. Uh, uh, before, it, we used to be uh, in a much better shape than the United States, but then we, our economy started start going down before the pandemics and the senior pandemics depends on the disbursement of the government when ups and downs, you can see this. And now we are seeing a, a, a slow trend for the Brazilian retail business more recently. So if I see the data that's come out of the Bay Pro, sounds like we make some stability in here and things are picking up again uh, for a positive trend here in Brazil. You can see United States, a big jump in March was amazing, 21%. So it's a stability because of the pandemic is, is clear in this picture here, if I can see that. When you look into e-commerce, the Brazil is growing faster in the United States. You can consider this because we are less penetrated or because people here are using more than the United States. You can use in both ways. When you think about penetration of this, the United States is roughly speaking around 15%. We are around 10%, roughly speaking, right? I don't want to go over details of numbers. So the magnitude is similar, but we are doing, we are performing very well in terms of e-commerce here in Brazil. I think this is a history in the past. You got the consumer, always the companies used to say, no, we want a multi, let's call a multi ways of selling my business. I want a, uh, different channels and so on and so forth. But at the end, the reality is the people was much more specialized in the, the regional they used to have. So I'm in store business, I'm in store business. I'm an e-commerce business, I'm e-commerce business. I think that with the pandemic, everybody learned how to do e-commerce. And I can see my everything that we are related to and we're involved with 
It's like tons of companies today doing this, and we can see the market evolving much more because of that. So today we have a more better see companies using different channels as the need for their to, to sell more, to sell better, and to reach the customer in a better way. So it's nice to see these trends. And this is the idea, I think. The future is the possibility to give to customers the way they want to do that. So this is interesting to see the world of digital. What is the trick behind this thing here and explain this thing? You guys can understand. The fraud is something that bothers us as a consumer. So you guys imagine if you want to do a buy on your card for some here, for some reason it's not in there, you lost somebody, steal it, you've got a fraud, this transaction's not mine, you start arguing against this. So we have to put an infrastructure behind this. It's a tokenized transaction, as we call it, authenticated transaction. You can use different names for it. So this is a hard work with merchants, with acquirers, with issuers, to make the transactions happen in a strong environment for the e-com business. So to give you as an idea of numbers, Brazil, uh, in the world, the physical world, that's what I mean, where you get your card in your hand, go over a POS, a machine, or a terminal, whatever you go with your card in your hand, Brazil is the best in, in the world in terms of uh, protection, in terms of less fraud, if I compare. My fraud is around one, two bips. That's nothing compared to the rest of the world. The fraud is much bigger than Brazil. With the physical card in your hand, using with your PIN on your device that you have in place here. And when I go to the e-com, I'm not the best in class. I'm kind of uh, in the middle, the average. And we used to be the worst. And we are pushing this agenda very hard to become the leader in here as well. Because if all the merchants, everybody do tokenize the transactions, I will give the full protection to our customers. So we are gonna be start doing WhatsApp pay very soon now in Brazil. It's gonna be in this kind of uh, environment. I'm doing transactions with Uber, for example. Many others in Brazil is already in this environment. It's not 100% the market yet, but we are moving, we are moving a very nice way. So this is pushing consumers for a, this environment. So that's why everybody's increasing the amount of purchase online and things like that. So that's nice, nice to see all those data in front of us. So I think the biggest challenge we have in here is to not only protect, as I said, but beside this is the experience to the consumer. So I want a seamless experience for consumers. And this is very hard to give it. Because imagine you go over a website to make a, a, a purchase, you have to put the information or not, depends if you're already there or not. So that's always bothers you with something more. So the idea here is after we go over all those different things, we have solutions for long tail business, for small, for medium, for large, for so it doesn't matter. You, everybody has to have some kind of solution that bothers you almost nothing. So you just can go there, shop, do whatever you want to do. And at the end, the payment will happen in a good way, in a nice environment. That's the way we are today. And we are working very hard on this. We already have, everything is in there. So it's a matter of fact of how we do this better. And this is, a, I always like to talk about this LGPD. This is important because everybody talks about protection of data. Today, data, everybody talks, data is the next, next uh, petroleum, blah, 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 blah. That's the fact, that's the reality. Data is always so important. But the problem, how you use this in a, in a nice, in a good behavior, let's call it way. So to do that, we need to develop different kinds of tools and capabilities. So that's what's going on in the market today. So you have different kinds of things. Brazil is very well, it depends on that. Our rules, our bills is well set up because it's the latest one in the world. So we have a very good bill. In the open bank, we are very fast and going over and, uh, and uh, we are seeing how this could be and help us as well. So that's good, good to see and good to share this with you guys. Uh-oh, uh-oh, it's not going. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, no, sorry, I don't know what happened. Sorry about that. So another thing that is important to mention to you guys is about the contactless payment. So this phase with cards, uh, uh, cards or your device, whatever it is, this is growing very fast. I think this is there is a countries in the world like Australia, for example, almost 100% of the transaction, number of transactions done with this kind of uh, payment. In Brazil, we just launched this recently. 
we are well prepared for the infrastructure and so on and so forth. So we are seeing today our volumes going up very fast. We have seen like multiple, three, four, five, it doesn't matter, but we want to see billions of transactions this year. We are going to be start seeing billions because the Brazilian market, you guys could see in there is almost 25 billion transactions per year. So I want to see those transactions come over 10, 15 to 1 in so. Uh, to give in Latin America, the country that's most penetrated and contactless transactions is Chile. Chile is about three years they started. Today, over 60% of their transactions is already done in this way. So Brazil is, is going in the same direction. So I think today, as a matter of fact of time, we are going to be reaching that. You're going to be in a very nice level very, very soon. So we are very happy to this because this, this technology is very good and very strong. And the market, Brazilian market is well prepared for that because what I said before to you guys, we always develop this in a nice way. Our network here in Brazil is well prepared and everywhere you can go, you pay with contact as already and things like that. So all set. Now is a matter of fact of time, consumer getting more cars in their hands or devices in their hands and using this capability. That's where we are today. The other thing that's going on in the market that is important to talk about is real-time payments. You guys talk about the famous PIX. Everybody talks about PIX. I think PIX is something very important. We are the only company in the world that has a MasterCard that does this in more than, than two or three countries. You do this in 40 different countries around the world. So the most relevant countries in G20, 13 of those G20s, MasterCard does this. Uh, we have the platform. We know how to help with solutions. We know how to help us with them provide not only the solution, but also the capability to do the transaction with his needs. So we know all the infrastructure. But the important in PIX in Brazil that there was a need for the market. We helped a lot to build this. So it's already in place. It's growing a nice way. And PIX in our business is a complementary business. We can see this everywhere around the world. They, they not compete with each other. The difference is this. PIX is one way of payment. And like I said at the beginning, remember, you can use the ways of payments most convenient to you where, when you are making the payment. So when you look into PIX, you, you see you have to go over the website, blah, 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 the application, so on, to make the payment. It's different when you use a card, for example, in NFC, like I told you guys, for example, or you go over the and, and, and a website, whatever. So it depends the way you do. You have to have the preference to decide what to do. And PIX is well prepared to do transactions account by account. So it's well, today is moving well and they are going volume in the market. So you guys can see here, uh, when you have the numbers of registered accounts, 133 million, because you can register by citizens up to five. Uh, so today is about half to speak, 60 million Brazilians already has a fix. And this number is not growing so fast anymore. Transactions is growing, you can see here, uh, because they are reaching more. But if you compare those numbers with the numbers of cards, for example, I talked to you guys, our volumes talks about billions. They are talking millions, so we are very far each other. Oh, despite they are growing, but sounds like when you look at the data and how they are working, is a similar transactions as a bank account transfer. That's good. Helps us to kill cash. I think the end of the game is to kill cash. So every single thing that happens that we can help us to kill cash, we love it. So Pix is one of those capabilities. So we have those. So we are going to have WhatsApp soon now to help as well. So all those things are good to help us. So what's coming next? So I think it's, uh, it's important us to look into the future. I think we had a, a little, uh, on the past, when you look into the past, was looking, let's say, uh, six, seven years ago, 10 years ago, we used to say, wow, those wallets. Remember the wallets, the Apple Pay, those are kind of things will, will dominate the world. This is gonna be the new engine for the world. So Samsung Pay, Apple Pay, uh, mobile payment, this was going to be the telcos who destroy the, the industry, I, I, lots of conversation around that. This movement, we saw what happened, everything, the evolution was good for everybody. Then comes out the conversation around, now we're talking about open bank. Open bank is going to be the next frontier, everybody's going to be doing open banking, open bank, open banking. Uh, you have this payment, like speaks, né? payment, instance payment, all those things part of the agenda since the few years until today. Now they are talking about cryptos. Oh, now it's going to be crypto. Crypto is the next frontier. Let's see how crypto is going to go and so on and so forth. We always like to say one thing. It doesn't matter what's going to come. It doesn't matter where we are. Always we have to think about the consumer. How I can bring value to consumer and consumer take the right decision when they need it. And as much as I can transform any payment, a seamless payment, we are going to be in a better shape. 
So all those things are nice, counts a lot, helps a lot, but always we need something behind. And the something behind is the data that I mentioned before. So we have all those artificial intelligence, all those different things that we can talk about it, uh, ways to authenticate yourself, ways to use data, ways to look for the future. This is part of what's behind. I use an example that if you have, we, you, I remember, sorry about that, but back in the end of the 90s, was announced that the chip, there will be the dominance for the world because everybody will have a chip when you're going to have your information there. So everybody can use that and provide you better experience for everyone. Chip was never used for that because there was no capability for the machines to process information, the amount of information we have. Today we have. Today you have capability to process, to read this, to use this in a nice way. That's why data is coming to be so important. It took us one year to get where we are today. So it's easy to talk about it. People like to, the, the marketing people love to talk about those different things. It's nice, but to transform this in reality, it takes time. So industry of payments is similar to the same. It's all good, those things we are bringing, like the behavior biometric, that to authenticate yourself, to use this to do. We, call, we have a company that calls New Data, for example. You don't need to put your credentials in your mobile. I know that you are you because the way you use your mobile. I have all the, the intelligence behind it to identify yourself. So this kind of thing is more and more in front of us and we are using those kind of things more and more. So this is gonna be the way you think is gonna be the future from now on. Not only in data and the crypto, all the other things is gonna come. But thinking, like I said, consumer is the game. So the consumer is, they are the ones that has to have the power to decide whatever they need. So I will stop here, open for questions, because for sure the idea is to talk to, have the conversation, not to myself to be making uh, tones up, uh, 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 bother you up more and more information that probably you guys already know. But it's a pleasure. Thank you so much again, P.K. Edson and, and Luis for, for the opportunity. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys and open for a conversation with you guys now. Let's share. Thank you. Amazing presentation. Um really uh, it's uh, enlightening to understand a little bit how your industry works. Uh, now, Luis Davi, I think the ball is on your court. Thank you, thank you, Piquet, thank you, João. Uh, this thank was you. a great presentation on behalf of the, the chamber. Uh, please accept our thanks for the speaking to our members and friends. I would like to invite the co-chair, uh, Mr. Edson Tamamaro, who extend the invitation to João to join me on moderating the question. Amamaro, thank you. Uh, say welcome to João and uh, you, your questions, please. João, thank you very much for a great presentation uh, that you change our lives for sure. Uh, I have thank some question for you that uh, the people that sent to us. Uh, what does the future that credit-based transactions look like for P2P transactions? Edson, the name talks for itself. So when you, you talk about instant payment transactions, instant payment, you're just transferring something to something. When you talk about credit, you're saying that somebody has to give a credit to somebody to make the payment. So there are those different things. The tool that you use to make the transfer doesn't matter, but you need to give your credit to you. Imagine that you want to go over your account to make a transfer to somebody. You don't have money in there. If you don't have credit behind the account, you won't be able to transfer the money. So you need a credit. So this is different ways to see this. So when you talk about credit card, we always gonna have a credit behind it. So if you add capability that says, oh, okay, I can, like they are talking about, I can make an agenda for your payment. That's true, you do an agenda, that's true. But it's an agenda. If you get to that date, you don't have money in your account, won't be transferred the money to you. So by buying risk. So credit is a risk. Trans transfer money, payment transfer, instant payment, whatever it is, is not risk. It's just a transfer of money. So those are different things. And I don't see those things competing each other. We are seeing that if you're looking more mature, Mark, doing this, the number goes over just to give you a glance. Uh, no more than 5 to 10% of the total transaction that happens in the merchant environment, let's say the consumer environment, doesn't go over the instant payment. That's the only one that goes over the instant payment. Five to 10, no more than that. Everything else relates to the payment goes over the other side. Also, if you look to the Brazilian experience in the PIX, the average ticket is around 700 reais. 
The average ticket for my business around 50 reais. <laughs> it's, 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 it's nothing comparable. It's just a transfer of money. So you just use that and that's okay. When you go over the credit, my, my average ticket is 100. The 50 is for debit, the 100 for credit. So it's a different business. Uh, we, like I said, is we're going to have together, we're going to be working together. It's a very nice way to have more capability to make as a consumer use electronic payments instead of using cash to make your payment. I think that's the beauty of this. But we don't compete. So different products, different capabilities, like a prepay, like we'd like to say. You pay before, you pay now, or pay after. That's a prepaid card you pay before. A debt card you pay now. And a credit card you pay later. So you, what do you want? You, which way you want to make the payment? If you want to pay now, you have the possibility to use a payment, instant payment transfer as well. But if you want to pay before, you have to put your money in there and so on and so forth. You are using a prepaid card. So it depends. It all depends like that. So I like to see the future is going to be like that. Possibilities. Consumer is the one that takes the decision, not us. They are going to take the decision the best way always. That's what we need to do provide as a company to put out the things in front of the consumer with the same experience, not bothering you them as at all, like I said before, give you capability and strong security behind any transaction that happens because that's the beauty of our business. Perfect. We have another question, uh, João, regarding how payments industry sees the rise of digital currency and evaluates is a viability. Yeah, we see this, like I mentioned to you at the beginning, we have like 150 different currencies already in our network. We can put one more or 10 more. Today we have, happen speaking, 2,000 different currencies in the world with this cryptocurrency, like dollar. We have to speak, I think it's 2,000. Uh, uh, and what we say is that if the currency has three different elements, first of all, it has to be a legal currency. Second one, a stable currency. Third one, respect the consumer, can be non network. I don't have a problem with that. So you have a lot of long conversation around central bank digital currency, CBDC. This is many central banks are doing this. Costa, uh, not Costa Rica, sorry. Uh, Bahamas already did in, in Latin America. They already did it. They already have the pilot. Some others, Brazilian government, central banks talk about that already. It's an agenda. We have an agenda with that already. So there's a different central banks trying to do this as well. It's going to be a different kinds of uh, cryptocurrency. So the, this is going to be part of the environment. The network works. It doesn't matter for what currency. It doesn't matter. But we don't want to put currency in front of us that doesn't bring support to consumer. Because as I said always, consumer is in front of us. If consumer cannot complain, cannot debate, cannot discuss, cannot see if they make a mistake or not, don't count on us to do it. Because it won't be something that makes sense to MasterCard to do things that does not apply for the consumer. That's, that's the idea behind it, this thinking. But open, and we are talking to so many all the time. It's, 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 it's today, like I said before, is the new frontier. We are gonna be seeing many different ones and using different purpose. Well, that's okay, fine, let's go and let's use it. <laughs> Thank you, João. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, João, I have uh, another question here. Uh, the Chinese government is testing an official digital currency. Yes. Do you think this will expand to other parts of the world? And how this affects the traditional way of making payments, such as credit cards? Well, Luis, yes, I do believe that it's going to happen. I think we are going to be seeing more and more central banks work with digital currency. I think that is something that will make the the payments easier for everybody. So today, imagine, use an example, so you guys can think about it. If I do, I try to send money from the United States to Brazil, you have different capabilities to do this today. On the past, it was a nightmare. Today, still being not so good, but it's not a nightmare like it used to be in the past. If you have a digital currency, you can do that in a better way. So think about that. So this kind of thing will happen. We, we understand this will come, will happen. You, you can transfer money in a better way. But this is won't kill the credit or the debt or business. It's part of our business because the currency that's behind is the way to make the payment. So how you're going to use your credit or not is not a decision of the currency. It's a decision of you. I want to. I need a credit to make my payments because I like. No, I don't need a credit, so I can make a transfer from my account. It doesn't matter. You decide what to do. But I think this is the combination that applies together. So we see the future. 
think about the Brazilian market. We are a poor country, and we understand that credit is necessary here in Brazil. If I look at the amount of the credit compared to the GDP, compared to other countries, there is nothing compared. In terms of percentage, you talk here in Brazil, roughly speaking, 30%, something like that. And you talk when I say it's hundreds or 200, countries with 200, 100 some. Everybody uses credit much more than we use here in Brazil. So the frontier for us here is, I don't see any risk. Because you guys could see the amount of credit in our business in Brazil is two-thirds. In the rest of the world, in, go Europe. Europe, credit is like 10%. 90% is debit. United States is about half and half. So it so depends. So in Brazil, we have much more space for credit. So it depends on the country. But one business doesn't kill the other. I think things are complementary because we need always to think about the best way to do business with our consumers and the best way to to bring us to this, to this uh, new frontier of payments. I think they'll be excited because if we imagine you make payments with different things, just for curiosity for you guys, here in Brazil, I don't know if you guys know, but we have other official uh, currencies, not only reais. We have like a Palmeira, is the name of a currency in one, one uh, specific area in Fortaleza, for example. And we accept Palmeira here, for example. Is it possible? There is a, they have this official, uh, is, a, is officially approved by central bank. And we have this. It's a one way to make the payment. So I went to this community past years ago to help them to develop the community so on and so forth. I said, no, you have to take our Palmeira as a, as a curious. <laughs> no problem. Let's do it. So this kind of thing happens. We use, for example, loyalty business and the loyalty rewards program. You can pay with use your, your points. You, you don't need to present money today. You do that in a cashier, use your points. So we have a pay with a, a pay with the rewards, we call that. You don't need to present your points, nothing. You just make the payment and the system, you decide that I want to pay with points, you pay and goes. And the points are transfer, transformed into money when the payment. So you have this kind of thing already going on in the market. So that's, that's interesting to see because the future is open for this. And I really believe you're going to have much more experiences. And we as a decision, uh, decision maker at the end, see what's better for us, whatever it is, it has to be taken, when it has to be taken. Thank you, João. Uh, we receive another one here. Uh, in the U.S. market, there are many payment options such as ATM, digital bases such as Zelle, Vemino, being used at the same time. Do you see an evolution where digital payments will happen even faster? I do think, because we as a consumer, we are pushing hard and better solutions always. You don't like things that, that doesn't give you a solution right on time. You don't like that anymore. So things are changing, changing faster. So we are seeing more and more of those things. And I think the payment has, a, has happened fast, uh, if you take, think about it. How we used to do payment, like say five years ago, and how we do payments today? Wow, is that completely changed? Lots of change. Not only in terms of time to answer, but the security behind it, also, about the options that you have, about the way you do things is different. And there's a many different things that change along the period of time. And this is still happening. So United States, like not only United States, but every single country have tons of different capabilities. If you look at Zeto, United States, you guys have two ways of make transfer. Brazil has just one, the PIX and SIP. Today you have two as well. The United States, you guys is, didn't have that. So today you have two different chambers doing this. And we are one of them, those. We as a MasterCard, we do in United States, one of those. So is, this is what's behind the scene. So this, let's call it, the FinTech that's gonna be in front of us doing whatever they need to do, it's gonna be 25 trillions of FinTechs doing that. But it's gonna be behind the scene, there's the system that is approved, it has the infrastructure to make it happen. Because it doesn't matter who does the way to do it, to present to consumer, behind the scene, that's the, trans, the change that happened and today is becoming more and more easy to do that with much more security. Thank you, João. We have another question here. Could you talk about MasterCard in the global trade finance industry? Okay. Hello? I'm sorry, something Hello? happened. Hello, hello, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Me? Oh, sorry, yeah. I, I missed you. Sorry, please, would okay. you repeat? Please? Yes. You, I don't know what happened. Yes, sorry. I'm going to repeat. 
Could you talk about MasterCard in the global trade finance industry? Uh, what can I say in that? Uh, we, we, uh, we understand that we have two big opportunities in our business, thinking about the future, okay? One that is in the B2B environment. Just to give you guys in numbers, we are part of the B2C business today. That's the consumer, okay? That we call. So this is for the world is around $50 trillion. When you talk about the B2B business, you talk about $250 trillion. So this is our next frontier. So in terms of B2B, you have, you have everything to do. So you guys know Brazil very well. So you guys know Boleto. United States, you guys don't have this kind of solution. Boleto is a solution, is a perfect solution. So we are just entering to this market with solutions that provide this kind of capability to the rest of the world that doesn't have it. Because the suppliers and the, and the buyers, they have problems. How can I, con the consolidation of those data and so on and so forth. That's a business in here. So if you start thinking about, I'm just giving a small example, okay? If you start thinking about those different things that is possible in the B2B environment, the amount of possibilities is huge. So this is going to be more and more relevant for our future payment. Because if you think about the organizations, they used to be seated in some solutions that was defined along the time, and they don't change much. Because I'm used to do this, I don't need, this is works, I'm fine with this. They're not thinking about things that could help them to do better in the future. So I think this is a change in coming very fast in there. So today, when we talk about the, with those organizations, think about supply chain, finance. Look, we guys talk about credit many times. So imagine the opportunity. If you're sitting in a big uh, bunch of network in your business, you have like I don't know, thousands of suppliers, you have millions of consumers, you have different kinds of needs. Why you not, cannot be in a supply chain finance doing this somehow? So this opportunity. So if you think about those things, MasterCard is able to provide all those different capability to put our partners into those kinds of business. If you think about us as a company, we always are going to be saying, I have more to do. So that's why you talk about data. That's why I talk B2B. I talk about government. How much you can do for government? How much governments are... In Brazil, you guys know, you don't pay tax with cards, right? You don't pay. We are just launching this. This was launched two months ago. This is why you don't have the option. I'm not saying that's better or worse than anyone. I just use cards to make payment if you want. Why not? There was not in Brazil where you only use two cards to make payments on tax. It was when you get to the airport, you have to pay some extra when you are getting into the country uh, with something that you have to pay something to the, 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 the federal police. You can use cards. Except that, zero. We start two, two weeks ago. Think about transit and things like that. So when you look at the government, it's another way to get into our business. So the, our business is getting bigger because of that. So we like to say that the opportunity we have in front of us is huge. And the ability that we have to go there also is huge. So the thing here is time. Where you go, prioritization, things like that. So things are changing in a good way. So yes, we can do more. Imagine, like I said before, you can do transactions in a much better way. Imagine with suppliers and buyers from different countries, it doesn't matter because I know how to deal with currency. I know how to deal with those different things. So I see, yes, the car business getting into this kind of uh, let's call space more and more and more in the near future. Thank you, João. We have another one here that uh, uh, what are the threats uh, you are see ahead of the payment industry? Just I always to like you, to... Yeah, uh, João, just to give you an example, for example, the Bitcoin that we are talking about, for example, one transaction of Bitcoin uh, costs $30. For you to do a transaction of Bitcoin, it takes some minutes to do. So it uh, looks like uh, your industry is much more ahead, more more sophisticated. In, uh, I don't know, in one minute or 10 seconds, you don't know how many transactions the credit card companies does. So the Bitcoin still, everybody's talking about the crypto and so on. But for you to uh, effective do a transaction, will cost more and takes a, a lot of time. And you have not, like you said, the, the legal 
is a little bit uh, uh, not so clear. Controverse. So, yeah, controverse. <laughs> so uh, I think we are your environment. You are much more secure than this new wave that's coming. If, but they still have to be a lot of regulation, controls for them to be in five, 10 years down the road. But what, what do you see as a threat ahead in the payment industry? I see three things, Luis, that I think is very important to us. And at the same time, they're a threat, same time could be my partner. Uh, the one thing I mentioned a couple of times about, let's call, I use the name fraud industry, just to use an example. This is very tricky and risky because imagine, like I say, I want to go into a new market to expand our business, blah, 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 blah. But if the fraud becomes something that I cannot go over there, it can destroy my business. So this could be a big threat for us. So we have to take care of it. It's part of the process. It's a, it's a kind of the environment, but it's a very, very big thing. It's, it hurt the industry in a huge amount of money. It's a half speaking the industry talks about $70 billion per year in fraud around the world. So there's a lot of bunch of money. So if you can, we have this at risk. So we have to protect ourselves on that, that track. On the other side, like you're saying, when you talk about different, let's say, ways of payment, we are very comfortable to talk about it. Because as an industry, we know how to make payments in different ways. So yes, could be something that could come and say, oh, this is better than yours. You're going to be losing share or winning share. You can become smaller or bigger. It doesn't matter. You are going to compete to it because this is part of the competition. Uh, it's going to be something to make the payments in a better way. Welcome. Like I said to you, consumer will take the decision. So uh, we see here, yes, problems that could come. But I think we are well positioned to face it because you can have different ways of making payments with different currents, with different data, with different what, what else. We, are, we think we are sitting in a position that we can say, okay, Let's play. Let's play. And the other one I like to say always is regulation. So the important thing with the regulation is to make sure the regulation comes to make it parity. Because the regulation cannot be something that gives a privilege to you and I, I'm the loser. That's not fair. So if every single thing that comes to the market comes at the same level of regulation, open for the competition, environment that we love it, MasterCard is the one that provides the competition, the open environment. I did this in countries. I did destroy a monopoly in Chile since the beginning of the world last year. Took us five years of hard work. So we are open for competition. So every single thing you do for competition, count on me. Everything that you do not for competition, I don't like it. So we see there's a partner with Central Bank is very relevant because they are the regulators. They are the ones to take the decision. In our industry today, it's much more regulated than it used to be in the past. In the past, people didn't care about our business because it was small, it was not relevant, it was it's not important for the consumer. So from the last, let's say, 10 years, from 10 years to today, this thing has getting evolved and much bigger, much more relevant because of the importance of our industry. So today, we are part of the day-by-day -day activity of us as a consumer. So the regulation is important. So we count on those things to don't become a trap. Like I said, could be my part, but it could be a trap if they issue something that doesn't make sense. And to, to make change and adapt each regulation to make sure the competition is a parity is not an easy thing, Luis. It's not an easy thing. Because if you think about solutions that will come, we are the biggest company that works with fintechs. In Brazil, to give you a glance, I have 95% of share on fintechs, just to give you a number. So I, I, don't, I have a dominance in this market. I work with these guys. I love those guys. I pro promote those guys. So the new bank is the biggest fintech in the world. was promoted by us. I remember the first time I had a meeting with David and Chris and their back room and their apartment of one of them. I said, I'm a crazy to give you guys a license to start issuing cards. I think we're a crazy, but let's go. Let's start this business. Let's see where we get them. So today they are the number one in the world. So we are love those guys, the kind of guys that comes with different things to change ourselves, to make ourselves better and in a better situation. So all those things count tons of points in our industry. So I don't see threats in the way that I can destroy our business. I see threats of something that can help us to develop more. But for sure, something could appear that we're going to lose more, win more, share or not, green up or not growing, making more money or not. 
I think our, our, our PE ratio at the stock market is always at a nice number, but we keep going. We keep going up. So we are in a good shape because our, I think the, 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 our strategy makes sense to the investors, makes sense to the market community because we have this strategy of multi-rail, doing well by doing good in an open environment. Why not? Could not be better to play with. So let's come. I love competition, my friend. I love. The only thing I know is I don't like to lose. I hate to lose. So I like to win, but I love competition. That's the way it is. Let's play. Uh, uh, I have another one here. It's one of the finest. Uh, uh, I represent a B2B segment. We represent MasterCard in Latin America. But there is a lack of acceptance of cards in companies. What are you doing to create correct rewards incentives for companies to use the credit, the, the cards for the payment purpose? Perfect question, perfect time. That's what I mentioned about the open of the market. So we need to make an open environment for acquirers because we need, we need footwork, we need network. So like, for, to give you a number, Brazil has 12 million of merchants, the United States has 14. To give you a number, so you guys can keep in perspective. So it is some, you need to make the environment open. If you do that, you expand, like we did in Chile. I'm using Chile as an example all the time, just to use it as a reference, okay? So Chile just opened up. So we almost multiply, we almost multiply by two in less than a year away. So that's the way it goes. So the network is extremely important to make cards open every single place. We don't have the, this, this, let's say, this equality in LAC yet. We have many counties to do a lot of stuff. Yet. It's a hard work, but we keep, we are in the right direction. Takes time sometimes more or less than the others, but yes, we are promoting, we are making the opening, we are making the environment, we are making everything happen to make things possible, to bring players, to make players to make investments and things to become more open, more equal to everyone that wanna play in that. For sure, it's not an easy game. Uh, the game is not over. We are in the beginning of the journey. It's a long, long journey, but I think we are on the right path. So the discussion here is how long it's gonna take us. I care less. Let's keep working hard to make sure every single year we can multiply those numbers for something that makes sense to help us doing our business in a better environment. Thank you, João. Uh, I think this was the, one of the first uh, uh, meetings that we have with you. We can do this in a series. It's a very important topic. Uh, probably for the second semester, we can like update with the new wave. And, More than a pleasure. Uh, Yes, uh, I think we have uh, reached today our time. Thank you again. Uh, thank you for a very interesting ed education event. Uh, we look forward to having you back in near future and for an update. Pleasure. Thank you so much for the invitation. Congratulations to you guys for what you guys have been done. And congratulations for being the number one by, by country chamber, right? Uh, uh, congratulations. Uh, very nice to see that. So congratulations for everything you guys do. And it's a pleasure. Economy, anything you guys are needed. Yes, thank you very much for your participation, for accepting our invitation. Uh, very useful, important information. We surely want to have you here with us again. Uh, thanks, Luis Davia Zambuja, for putting this together. Uh, Edson Tamamaro. Uh, Larissa and Mary always uh, working hard in the behind the curtains and uh, I'd like to thank everyone for your participation looking forward to uh, seeing you in our one of our next events and uh, have uh, everyone have a, a very good weekend ahead uh, as uh, we finalize here our webinar thank you Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, João. Thank you, guys. Obrigado, João. Prazer. Obrigado, Prazer, Edson. Muito obrigado. Muito obrigado. Muito bom para vocês. Obrigado, Mero. Felicidades para vocês. Muito obrigado. Obrigado. Obrigado a você. Tchau.